Hi, um, Rob's back, along with his hands. And uh, I promised uh, last time that I would decide whether to take the top part off or the bottom part off. I think I'm going to take the bottom part off because um, there's this annoying tilt to the machine. So I'm going to remove the bottom. So if we look at the bottom, uh, let me just move this a little bit. OK. I guess that's OK. Well, whatever. Um, yeah. Make sure that's in frame. OK, so um, there are two feet, but these other two feet happen to be missing. Um, these screws kind of seem to be in the wrong place. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to remove them. Um, I'll put these screws in um, bag one as well. They look sufficiently different. So I'm just going to take my big screwdriver and um, remove these screws and see what they are. So this screw, it's kind of a big screw. Is it an eight? No, it's even bigger than that. It's a 3 32 screw. And it is half an inch. Bag it. And let's move on to this other one. which I would guess is the same, but you never know. Sometimes, sometimes people replace these screws with the wrong size. Half an inch, same size. Okay, and now we've got these two top screws here. Here's one. Um, I should probably take the foot off first. So here's one foot. Um, the screw is actually not coming out of the, uh, the foot because the foot is uh, deformed. So it's not coming out. But I can still measure the screw. And it is indeed 3 16 30 second. So that goes along with the foot in the bag. Let's take the other foot off also. Okay. And ah, this screw actually does come off. That's interesting. So it's got a shoulder on it. And that's important to know. So I'm pretty sure it's also 31632nd. Yes, it is. And it is of length. 0.855. The, the threads themselves are 0.448. And that goes into the foot. And now these other screws, this one I've already loosened, is 316.32. It's also half an inch. See, if you look at this screw closely, I don't know if it's going to show up on the video. Let's do this. I guess it's going to show up. There's kind of a tiny shoulder. It's not really a shoulder. It's just an unthreaded part. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference. I'm not of a, enough of a machinist or a mechanical engineer to know if that's significant or not. Okay, and then here's the final one. And I'm holding on to the machine because this is the last screw holding the back on. Okay, there we go. So, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to set my timer. So we've got a timer going on. Um, so back to this. So again, it's a 316th. Um, 
sorry, I said 3 sixteenths. It's actually a 10, number 1032. Yeah, it's a 1032 screw. And it's also half inch. Okay, now we can take the bottom off, and that's interesting. So here's the bottom. It's just um, some sort of a kind of a rubbery, plasticky kind of um, standoff here. Um, there's not much that's interesting here. It's just a, a bottom. Um, this is interesting. It kind of looks like one of those old desk blotters, I guess. Uh, maybe it's the same material, but it's, it's smooth on top. It's a bit rough on the bottom, and it kind of looks like it's got the impression of, I don't know, a cloth of some kind. Um, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's not rubber and it's not plastic, and it looks kind of clothy. It's got a little bit of, um, I don't know, threads over here. So, well, whatever it is. And it clearly goes on in one direction. Okay, well, that was dirty. Um, oops, I think I banged the camera. Okay, so, uh, all right, well, here's the, here's the underside. Um, hooray. So let's tip it back over and continue with the disassembly. All right, so I'm going to close bag one so nothing rolls away. All right, so um, now last video I said that there was a crank on here um, that was preventing the front from coming off. Now, if you've got one of those um, cranks that's really rusty and uh, you put some penetrating lubricant onto the screw um, because you don't want to remove it right away for fear that the screw will actually break um, because the, the force of the rust is holding it in place too tightly. Um, then in that case, I think it's best to just leave the front on um, until that uh, lubricant really penetrates inside. Um, so as I take the top off, um, if you have one of those machines that has the front on, we're just going to leave the front on um, and take the top and the front off in one piece because this uh, twirly uh, crank thing is actually only attached to the top. So, um, so yeah, just a little warning. Um, so uh, in order to remove the top, we're going to have to remove all of these keys. Um, so I'm going to open another bag so that I can put all the keys in there, the key caps. I'll call it bag two. Bag two, and I'll put the serial number on, 77339. So some of these uh, key caps will just pull right off. Okay, um, there, see, they just come right off. Um, the ones that don't, you'll have to pry them off um, with a screwdriver or something, but you don't want to damage um, the finish on the front because that would leave scratches and stuff. I mean, obviously, if the front is like completely rusted, um, I don't know. Well, you know, maybe you want to protect the top as well to prevent there from from being any scratches. So um, what you basically do is you take something um, to protect the front and then you just put it on the front and or the top and then you can lean your screwdriver up against it and just push the uh, the key cap right off. So um, but obviously removing it with your hands is more efficient in terms of time. So we've got eight rows of keys here. Hmm. That one's not coming out. So, and it's uh, two black rows, three white rows, and three black rows. And the idea is that these would be cents and these would be dollars. 
um, and the comma was over here. Now you can see that there are these flippy things, um, and that's, uh, that was there. It's green on one side to blend in with the top, and then white on the other side. So if you weren't using you know, dollars and cents, maybe you were using four decimal points, you can just um, flip one of these over, and that would be your decimal point, basically. Um, so, um, all right, let's try to, no? Okay, so we'll pry the nine off. That's all there is to it. So, uh, just give me a second to wake the computer up. So while I'm pulling all these digits off, um, I can tell you a little bit about the history of this machine and the Monroe Calculating Machine Company. Um, back in uh, 18 something or other, uh, let me see when, 1873, there was a guy whose name was uh, Frank Baldwin and he was an inventor and he invented a bunch of things including something called the arithmometer which was an early adding machine um, and there's a patent uh, a US patent that you can look up that was patented in 1874 uh, anyway so he he developed this adding machine but it was never successful um, there was no real profit in it um, anyway fast forward um, to around 1911 or so. Um, Frank Baldwin, he's now 73 years old, he meets up with um, this lawyer for Western Electric um, named Jay Monroe. Um, and I don't know how they met, but um, Monroe took an interest um, in the, the idea of a mechanical calculator. Um, so they decided um, in 1911 to start a company to build adding machines. Um, they actually founded it in 1912 in Orange, New Jersey. Um, so they started uh, building prototype calculators. Um, I, I think the prototypes were called A, B, and C. Um, because in 1915, they started selling uh, the Model D um, calculator. And uh, I've never seen a Model D. I don't know what it looks like. Um, I don't think you can even probably buy one or find one um, because there were very, very small numbers of each one built because they were really the first ones. Um, so the Model D in 1915 was followed up in 1916 by the Model E, and then in 1917 with the Model F, uh, again in small numbers. And then finally in 1918 there was the Model G, and that was the very first commercially successful um, adding machine that the Monroe Company sold. Uh, so starting in 1918 you can see the newspapers and magazines just saturated with ads for the Monroe calculator, um, 1918. Um, and they sold that for something like three years up until 1921 um, when they came out with the K series. Now what happened to H, I, and J? I'm not sure, but I suspect that those were prototypes for the Model uh, K. Um, I believe the Model G was significantly, well the Model K, which is this one, I think was significantly different from the Model G. So they had to go through several prototypes. Um, and I suspect that those are the missing letters. Um, so, and then there was the Model K that uh, was sold from 1921 to 1928. Um, how many were sold, I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure it's in the thousands, if not tens of thousands. Um, because you can find these all over the place. 
Um, now you noticed, maybe you noticed as I was pulling this apart, that there was one of the zero keycaps was missing. Um, that was missing when I bought it. Here's a little piece of one. Um, that was missing when I bought it. And maybe this is a piece of it. Uh, but I can probably uh, go into SolidWorks and model one of these keycaps and then just send it off to Shapeways to get it 3D printed. That's pretty cool. So, so the Model K is a manually operated machine, so it has this crank. Um, and that start came out in 1921. In 1922, they started adding motors to it. And um, the motor was this big thing that hung off the side. Um, and it sort of powered the machine from here. And it had a, a plus and a minus button. And it had a couple of switches on it. Um, it was fairly primitive. Um, but it was operated by a motor, which I guess was a new thing at the time. Um, and that, uh, they started doing that in 1922. So just one year after the, the manual version came out. Um, this is a manual version. So, okay. Um, I have taken off all the keycaps. Um, there is still this one button which uh, in fact is not connected to anything inside the machine itself. Uh, it's just a lever. Uh, basically what this does is it says item count on it. Um, and the idea is that these uh, rows would be used for a numeric entry. And um, you could press the one button down. And if you uh, turned the item count so that the arrow was facing that way, then when you cleared the key, the keys, uh, the one would remain uh, um, activated. So what this would do is that every time you, um, you turn the crank, um, this side of the uh, carriage, of the numbers in the carriage, would register one for every operation that you did. Um, if you subtract it, it would, it would reduce by one. So it's, it's not quite an operation counter. But for what it's worth, uh, that's what it's for. So if you release the item count and then press clear, well, OK, so obviously it's not working very well. Um, but the one is supposed to come up. I don't know why it's not coming up. Anyway, um, so the point is that this isn't actually attached to anything inside the machine. Um, so uh, what we now need to do is remove um, um, these flippy things. Um, they are actually connected to the, um, to the uh, frame of the machine, so we have to remove them. So I will take this uh, screwdriver. I'm going to close bag two, because that contains all of our keys. I'm going to start bag three. Where is my Sharpie? Right here. So bag three. Serial seven seven three three nine. Okay. I'm having this anxiety that the uh, that the camera is not actually recording, but it does look like it's recording. Also, my sound it is still recording. Um, okay, so uh, screwdriver and these are little screws, so I'm going to take the little screwdriver head out. Okay, so I'll remove this from the bottom first. Okay, so this is kind of a tiny screw, so it's probably a number four. Uh, yes, it is a number 448. It's got a kind of decorative round head. And it's a quarter inch. Personally, if it were me, I'd have gone with brass. It's 
remove this other screw. Okay. By the way, this video, um, these videos are published in HD, uh, 1080p. So I highly suggest that you go full screen on these because, you know, details. Also 440, also looks the same as the other one, and it is indeed quarter inch bagged, and now this just comes right out. So I guess these things are, I don't know, pressed in maybe? I'll just leave it as an assembly at this point and set it aside. Okay, um, hey look, dust. Okay, um, so I'll also do the same thing on the, this top rail. Um, there are three screws holding that top rail down. So I'm going to unscrew those. Four forty eight. Quarter inch. The reason that I'm being so careful about measuring these screws is that there aren't any instructions. Um, there's no reference online to you know what screw goes where. So if I get it wrong, um, that's it. Um, if I wouldn't be able to figure it out, um, I'd pretty much be hosed. Not going to make the obvious joke. Don't make the obvious joke. 440 quarter inch, and finally, okay, four, did I say 440? What I meant was 448. 440 would be a coarse thread. Um, this machine only uses fine threads. So 448, and again, quarter inch, bagged. Okay, and then we have this other rail. Will it fit in the bag? No. So I'll just set the rail aside. Okay, uh, let's see what else have we got. So we've got uh, this remaining screw here and this screw here that we can remove. Okay, 448, quarter inch, and, oops, oh, this one doesn't seem to want to come out. Um, I'm going to go with a slightly bigger head. Let's see, what, will this work? Yeah, this, this fits a little better. So, so in order to get this screw out, I'm not just going to apply um, torque, I'm also going to push down which usually helps. Yep, comes right out. Okay. 448 and quarter inch. Yeah, if I were definitely going to pimp this out, I would use brass screws. All right. Um, okay. So there are several screws that were kind of hidden under the keycaps, and you wouldn't be able to get to them. 
Um, there's one here, and there's one here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove those. Pushing down as I do it. Okay, this is also a 448. Quarter inch. And this next one. Also a 448. And quarter inch. All right, we're getting there. Um, I think there is this screw remaining. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Feels like that's attached to the frame. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, that is also 448 and a quarter inch. All right, so I should be able to remove the top now. And indeed, it is coming off. And there we go. All right, let's have a look at the bottom. Okay, so as I said, this wasn't actually attached to anything in particular. It's just something that hooks into the one key and prevents it from, from moving. Um, there's the, the um, twirly thing for the carriage. Um, there is this thing, which is what? Uh, doesn't seem to be anything in particular. Um, not certain what that is for. Uh, maybe it hooks to something in the machine itself. Let's see. Uh, yeah. I don't really know. Um, it kind of sort of looks like it's uh, somewhere around here. So anyway. Um, and then there is this uh, other thing over here which uh, seems to connect to here, to this thing. Um, and it's a lever which goes somewhere over here, so maybe it's connected to some mechanism over here. Anyway, um, this thing now slides out. So we can slide that out. Um, and set it aside. Um, these are actually rollers, they're bearings, and pro tip, don't use any lubricant or penetrating lubricant on these because that will screw up the rollers and cause them to freeze into place. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, um, so there we go. Here is the top uh, of the machine. So you can see that, uh, I don't know if it's possible to see, um, but the, uh, the profile of these things is such that if you push down, um, there's this spring-loaded rocking kind of lever that holds the key in place. And so if you release the rocker, it releases the keys. Hooray, all right. Let's, uh, let's see what else we can do, what else we can take apart. Um, we can, I believe, remove this entire uh, keyboard mechanism. 
I think, because there appears to be a screw here and a screw here, which holds this frame. Um, and another screw here, and this big sort of screw over here. Uh, well, it's actually inside here. That's holding on to the top frame. And in terms of the sides, I don't see anything here. And here, it looks like there's also nothing holding on to it. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove these two screws and these two screws and uh, see what we get. So, uh, do do do. All right. So, so on this side, you can see uh, that we have this screw here and this screw here. Which I'm going to remove uh, with maybe a no, I think this is the right size. So let's see how we're doing on time. We have oh, just about three minutes left. Okay, well. Um, I think I'm going to leave that until the next video. So let me go ahead and, well, no, I'll just leave it partially screwed out so that um, we can, uh, so that I can remember exactly which screw I was starting on. Um, okay, so that's it for part two of taking apart uh, this calculator. Um, the playlist is going to be called, the playlist on YouTube is going to be called um, Monroe. Uh, calculator model K restoration, I guess. Um, and it'll contain all the videos. Uh, this will be part two. And I think that is going to be it for this video. So until next time, bye.